Hey guys, it's Yishan here. Today I am bringing you guys some Liralusk Tri Brigade gameplay. This is the exact same deck I used at the Remote Duel Invitational. I know a lot of people were asking for gameplay. Uh, test Hands, that video is coming soon, the Test Hands video. Don't worry, you Grand Maju fans, I've got a Grand Maju deck profile coming for you guys this week. So make sure you subscribe, turn on those notifications, and let's get into the gameplay. So here we are with game one against Jordan, M-H-I-T-T. -T. Now, uh, I lose the rock, paper, scissors, so I am going to be going second in this game, but that's all right. Uh, you know, going second is fine. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens here. Uh, let's pause here for a second, take a look at the starting hands here. Okay, we've got, uh, well, before we keep going, we've got, my opponent's got an Ash, a Sinister Shadow Games, a Shadow Hedgehog, and an Ecclesia. Uh, with a meltdown, and I've got DD Crow, Rescue Cat, Sapphire Swallow, Gamma, Warbler. So we both have pretty, pretty good hands. Um, so that's always uh, good. You know, it's going to be a good game. Okay, so let's take a look here. He starts with a magical meltdown, and he's going to grab an Alistair. Now, he normal summons the Alistair here. Okay, and this is an important point in the game because it's our first decision. First question is do we Gamma this? And I decide not to, right? Because I'm looking at my hand and I see a cat in it. And Rescue Cat is very, very, very likely to get a hand trapped. And against Shadol, Dogmatic Index, you know they're running hand traps. Almost everyone's running hand traps right now. I also have a DD Crow, which is able to stop an Alistair as long as they don't have a second Alistair, okay? And so I decide to actually not Gamma here and let them search the invocation. Okay, and I see my opponent links off. Uh, I see he goes for a, a Selene's or, or a Light Link, I should say. And I realize I need to DD Crow this Alistair right away. It's actually, you don't want to chain DD Crow to the Invocation. Because in both scenarios, if they don't have an Alistair, you don't want their Invocation to be able to shuffle back the Alistair to, to do the same thing they were doing again. Or, or add Alistair to its hand to shuffle it back. So you want to DD Crow now and hope that the activation of Invocation is illegal now i noticed in this guy's hand he actually could have activated invocation uh and probably made a construct actually here uh, i'm a little surprised that he didn't do that oh actually i think invocation has to be both from the hand um so i guess he didn't want to waste his ecclesia so he decided to go for an ecclesia instead of a construct which i i can't understand so um right okay so here comes the Ecclesia. He is going to search a punishment. Uh, so he's gone for a punishment instead of trying to invocation for uh, his Ecclesia and his Hedgehog away. Heads to and, and, and passes his turn. So he's got a punishment. He's got a Shadow Games. And of course, I don't know this, but um, my hand is looking pretty good. I drew a Tanky, which is a fantastic top deck. And so I go for activating it. And he decides to Ash here, and I don't blame him. I, I would have preferred my opponent, I think it may be more experienced, but I would have tried to Ash the Fractal there because it's pretty likely that you can open two Fractals since you run a total of six of them in your deck. Um, however, it's the same result for me. I am just simply able to activate my side frame Gear Gamma here and because I really want this tanky to resolve, and I'm going to grab my Fractal here. Okay, so uh, this is why I love Gamma in this deck because it's... Honestly, your opponent sort of has to Ash at the Fractal step. One Ash is not going to cut it against like a full combo board. Although this guy does have traps, so maybe you can afford to play around Gamma if you if your hand contains some traps. Um, but he didn't this time, and so I was able to get my Omega off. And you can see why Omega is so important, because I actually want to be able to special my Warbler so that I can special other cards from my hand. So I'm able to get rid of the invocation which is unfortunate because i didn't know the other card in this hand i was hoping i'd hit the other card but you know it is what it is i go fractal i send the sparrow and i go warbler effect and he allows us to go through if you can stop this you should try to but he didn't have any way to negate this effect so this is going to happen and i am going to special summon this uh so i'm going to get my search he's going to chain dogmatic a punishment to stop me from going into the exceeds monster that cannot be targeted which i can understand where he's coming from here so he sends ntss pops both things and then he's going to go for a shadow games uh sending the aerial and banishing everything from my graveyard which is actually not a bad play unfortunately uh, this still loses to a, a single tribe beast because I have Nerval. I could go Nerval, Link Karibo, get a Keras, and, and do the same thing. 
But uh, this also shows off the incredible power of Rescue Cat here, as it's able to come down on the board and basically combo like nothing ever happened. So I decided to go for my standard uh, Nerval combo, except I wanted to make Appaloosa here because I wasn't sure what that last card in his hand was. And, and so I wanted to to sort of uh, uh, play it a little safer here. So I decided to go for the Appaloosa play. Uh, I banish his, his um, Ecclesia because it can't be destroyed by extra deck monsters, so I don't want to mess... Uh, mess with that. Um, I actually maybe should have banished the Meltdown here because I, I realized after that my plan was to go for Apex Avion. Um, but you can also go for Statue here. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna banish the Ecclesia, you should probably go for Statue because my plan was to go Apex Avion to be able to negate anything. However, I believe that Meltdown can stop the negation of um, Apex Avion for Shadow Fusion, which is what I was really worried about. And so it's probably better to go statue here because I, I I did use kit actually to dump the uh, spell card, which I think would have been the most optimal play here. I think uh, probably the most optimal play is to dump the spell and summon the statue and banish the banish the Ecclesia, but I didn't because I you'll notice that I go end phase here. I will actually summon Apex Avion instead of um, instead of. Instead of the uh, the statue, uh, so actually Shadow Fusion would have really hurt me pretty bad here. Probably not the worst because I have Appaloosa plus Called By, but uh, it wouldn't have been good. So this might have been a slight on the spam my part. I just wanted to point that out uh, as I'm watching this duel. Gotta be careful of Meltdown because it stops every sort of negation for Fusion Sum. It's not just Invocation. But I'm still able to get Game 1. He doesn't have the Shadow Fusion. So we go to Game 2 here. Uh, he activates Nadir Servant. I'm a fan of actually Nadir Servant if they activate it first thing because it is very likely that they do not have anything else. Um, and so because they usually try to do their inv invoke stuff first uh, before they Nadir Servant. So I hit it with an Ash. Um, and his hand is not very good. But I, I sighted in this Lightning Storm, but it's only going to get one back row, and that's not very good. I also top deck this Driver, which is pretty bad. Um, so I'm only able to stop, and he's going to go with Wendy, get Beast. Beast was a great idea here because it puts me in a, in a little bit of a tough spot here, and I don't really exactly have a good plan here. Now, actually, this would have been okay if um, I... This driver was a Trivies because I could have actually normal summoned this statue later, but I actually end up having to pitch it to the Karis, which is unfortunate. Um, but I have to do this, right? Because I really need to get that some more Glink and hope the rest of his hand is just garbage. I was suspecting that he had a Shadow Fusion because uh, if you're passing like that with just an Nidor Servant, you either have a boatload of hand traps, which is true, he had two ashes, uh, but also he you know, he also probably has, like, a Shadow Fusion, and he did. So, you know, but I still go for this play. I decided not to attack the Shadow Beast because I'm hoping that his hand is bad, um, and I can use a simple Apex Avion Negate to stop him in his tracks. Um, so that's what I go with. I pass to him. Now, if he didn't have a Shadow Fusion, uh, you know, this Apex Avion Negate would have been really, really good, um, but I feel like I'm forced to negate this, and then here comes the Shadow Fusion, which is just basically, it's just going to end the game, um, because Construct, the, the value is just too much, and, um, you know, basically this game is over, so he's easily going to be able to out my Simorg, and once the Simorg is gone, I literally, I don't have any follow-ups, and so it's not going to be a good game three for me, I top deck a Droll, but that's not very good. So, okay, game three. Uh, the all-important game three, as Lithium would say. This has been an interesting match so far. Uh, so he's going to... I draw, and opening hand, I've got Foolish, Ash Blossom, Karis, Called by the Grave, Harpy's Featherstorm. He's got a Beast, Crackdown, Shadow Fusion, Droll, Neshadol. Now I go Foolish for a Kit, for a Nerval, for a Fractal here, because I'm going for my Harpy Conductor play. Um, he actually is able to Droll and Lock for me, but I don't care. I don't even call by the Grave because I have nothing that I want to search. Also, this Harpy's Feather Storm is going to hold down the fort for me. So I go here, and I go for my um, some more play. So basically, if you have Harpy's Feather Storm plus, um, you know, some more, you're going to win the game because there's going to be really hard for them to out the some more. I also have an Ash Blossom plus anything that somehow can stop, you know, that Ash Blossom for that Shadow Fusion, and my uh, Apex Avion is going to be able to stop anything that will try to out... Uh, my Harpy's Feather Storm. 
except for Red Reboot, but no, almost nobody sides Red Reboot against this deck. And I'm able to get my Apex Avion. He goes, he activates Fleur de Lee. I don't want this uh, really on the board because I don't want him to kill my, my Apex Avion. So I just go with the Harpy's Feather Storm and that thing is negated. So he basically can't do anything, he passes. And this is where this Harpy's Feather Storm plus some more combo really comes in where it's just like, if you can get a whole turn with your opponent not doing anything to your board, I have a negate pending plus uh, more follow-up later. So I get a, a Sparrow, grab a Nervolan, and basically the game is over from this point. It's just a matter of, of finishing the deed, uh, maybe playing around a few things like Nibiru. Fleur de Lee comes down. Uh, for some reason, I thought this negated effects, but there's no Dogmatica monsters, so it's fine. Uh, once you get to that Appaloosa, I've got a negate for the back row. There's going to be no Nibiru tricks here. Uh, I have a Karis, Karis effect. Uh, I can discard the kit which I searched to send Rendezvous to, to play around things like Torrential Tribute even. And then we're just going to banish four for a Shurig. And, and this game is basically going to be over because we have an Appaloosa 4, the flip effect. Uh, and we're going to be able to out everything on this board. And we still get a Samorg Summon. So this one's going to be wrapped up. Um, but it was a really interesting match. And I, I do enjoy playing against uh, Invoked Shadol Dogmatic Variants because I feel like there is quite some back and forth uh, involved and so uh you know and it's also a decent matchup for me so I, I can say that that helps a little bit but yeah okay so you know that is the end of the game basically i'm gonna go end phase some of the statue and that duel is gonna be over okay so that was a pretty back and forth game um i think the next match i've got here is actually a mirror match um and my opponent uh no fault of his he's probably new to the deck didn't play uh very well but i was able to showcase you maybe some common misplays that beginners of this deck make and i think my opponent was a beginner i won the dice roll this time so i'm able to go uh of warbler into sparrow now my opponent made a mistake here if you can gamma the warbler you should um because it's super super powerful um, and basically there's there's no stopping it once they use the effect I mean you can try to special it again but like you know it's not going to end well for you if you don't gamma the warbler so I'm going to the sparrow and the sparrow effect resolves so I get my nerve all so basically I got a free nerve all out of this if he just gamma it earlier it would have been fine I go recital strong he realizes now that uh, I can't Gamma later because, you know, you're just going to go for the Appaloosa board and I'm going to be in trouble. So, I'll go, yeah, that, that that's right. Um, and so he just Gammas now, but the damage has already been done. I already have a Nerval and I'm simply easily able to go into uh, Appaloosa. I get to go to Link Karibo. I get to search a kit, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then I can use um, this Keras to pitch this kit to get some even more value. I send Tribrigate Oath because Karis is able to actually summon a Beast Warrior. So I have Beast, Beast Warrior, Winged Beast. I'm not even losing to Spell and Traps. And then during the end phase, I special my statue. He top deck statue, not a great top deck. Um, but, you know, it happens. He goes uh, tanky for his Fractal. I'm like, oh, it's a Mirror Mesh. That's interesting. I thought it might have been Zoo. I Ash the Fractal. You should Ash the Fractal. Uh, it's really, really strong. And so that's going to be the end for him. There's no tricks with Monster Reborn or anything like that. So uh, that's the end of Game 1. So Game 2, we're going to see him go first. And he actually opens a very, very solid hand. But misplays. Uh, certainly misplays. And so uh, he ends up costing himself here. He gets a little confused. Um... And so first he goes fractal, or first he goes tanking into fractal, which I allow, and then he discards fractal, and I feel like here I have to activate the ash because, uh, you know, for example, if he didn't have the gamma here, it would just be a Samorg Link pass, which is outable pretty easily in the mirror. Um, and if his hand is super good, you sort of have to ash the fractal. Uh, so I go for the ash here, but he has the gamma, so you know that that's part of the the mirror match. It, it is what it is, and he's you know he's gonna get a lot of value here. Uh, and I was surprised he didn't go straight for an omega here, but I figured he didn't run it. Um, and you can see why maybe not running omega is a little awkward, or at least not running any way to deal with an omega on your turn because he doesn't realize the drawbacks of the tri brigade. So he goes Karis. Kit, uh, Kit dumps the spell and he's going to go for a Link 2. And so I thought he was just going to go Harpy Conductor and then go, uh, you know, some more Link. Um, but he tries to link off everything for an Appaloosa. And I said, well, well, hold on a second. Remember, you can only use Tri-Beasts for Link material after you've used 
a, a tri, tri brigade effect and a lot of maybe new players don't realize this so he's trying to say like oh i don't need to play omega because i can just turn my gamma and my driver to an appaloosa no unfortunately that's not how that works so he has to reset here and now his plays are a little weird because he went into fair jet so he summons the Karis, tries to go appaloosa this way but then i say wait a second appaloosa you need different monster names so this is really awkward that he's just got this driver and gamma sitting here not providing him any value and he's like oh really that that sucks as well so like, what am i going to do then and then he sort of realizes that like well i'm basically screwed um because this board is not going to be very good uh simply just having one um one thing is not going to be enough now he still could have went for some plays here so i, I don't think i think his concession was a little early for example he can turn rugal and um Karis into an appaloosa and then use fractal effect to banish three i'm not sure why he didn't do that but he probably was just frustrated at himself uh with his misplays and so that is that so that's game two guys and let's get on to game three here but that, you know that wasn't the most high quality match but i did want to show you the difference uh a little bit of knowledge about the tribrigade lyra lust deck can make uh for you okay so let's go into game three um, so game three, I believe it was against uh, some sort of trap Shadol deck here. And so I lose a dice roll, which isn't great, but again, not the biggest deal on Dueling Book. Uh, you still got a lot of chances. It definitely hurts a lot against like virtual worlds if you lose the dice roll, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's Dueling Book, so not a big deal here. And so we're going to go and we're looking at our opening hand. It's, you know, very, very strong. Pot of Prosperity. Now, I'm starting to think that I should just Ash Pot of Prosperity. Uh, the reason for this is because, you know, like, especially in these trap decks, I mean, I don't know exactly what he's playing, like, he could be playing Virtual World, but, like, you know, in, in these trap decks, it's basically just getting them the best card out of their top six cards, and, like, there's not much else to Ash um, sometimes, and so, like, maybe I should have just gone for the Ash right here, but I didn't know exactly what he was playing, so I decided to hold off on the Ash uh, and maybe save it for a rainy day, so he reels a lot of cards here, you know, personally, I would have went for the, the Deer Servant, but I can see why he wants to go for the Dynamiscus, because, you know, you can discard a Wendy and, and get some value there, so uh, that's certainly very interesting. Um, but he's got a very, very good trap lineup, so I think I should lose this game, but I actually think my opponent misplays um, some of his traps. So he sets all his cards, sets his monster, passes the turn to me. I'm going to go tanky. I top deck Didi Crow, which is an interesting top deck. Uh, pretty useful against that uh, Shadol Schism that he has. So Fractal is going to discard Cobalt Sparrow, and he has an Ice Dragon's Prison here, so he should have used it. You should use it, because you really should stop Warbler Sparrow. I think one thing that people that are inexperienced about playing against this deck is they don't realize how powerful Warbler Sparrow is. If you can stop it, you should, and I think he definitely would have won this game were he able to uh, stop this combination. But he lets me get it off, which is pretty pretty good for me. I'm planning on going for a Zeus here. Uh, remember, this is untargetable, so it's really good against all his traps, his Dynamiscus, his Punishment. And so he's like, oh shoot, okay, but I need to get the Schism off, he's thinking, so he's going to target my Tanky instead. Uh, discard his Wendy, oh, and I actually misclick, and there comes the Shadow Dragon. So I think he's going to try to Schism here, but it's not really going to be enough because uh, he goes Schism. I chain Didi Crow hitting the Wendy, so he's forced to use both monsters on his field. Uh, and he goes for that. And I'm going to go uh, attack directly here. And now he has to Ice Dragon's Prison because the Zeus is just going to come down eventually. And so he's like, okay, Ice Dragon's Prison, I'm going to get rid of that. But I have a Nerval here, uh, plus a Foolish Burial. So Foolish Burial actually came in clutch because it lets me put an extra material in the graveyard for my Nerval. So the kit can dump the spell card. And now I have four Tri Beasts in my graveyard, which uh, as this window has not been on the field for any special ones, I got one special summon for a Shrake to easily banish the window. He's got no more targets for his schism. Farajet's going to come out, double search, and my opponent knows it's over. Okay, so now we're going to move on to game two. Your game two is an interesting one. Uh, our opening hands are pretty weird. He's going to go first again, obviously. Uh, I draw double lightning storm plus a fractal and then a brick. Um, and his hand is not great himself as well. So he's got duality, a pointer, prosperity, droll, and Wendy. Um, and so he's going to need to get something good here. So he starts with the duality and looks for a punishment. I probably would have went for maybe something else, but, uh, you know, I like strike is very, very good. I think probably a little bit better than punishment in this matchup, but he goes for the punishment, uh, seeing as he doesn't look like he's going to special from the extra deck very much, and he probably wants to get some Shadol plays going. So I understand why he went for the punishment there. Uh, he goes for a bunch of cards and gets a schism, which is a little strange as well. There was a judgment there. Um, there was a lot of good targets, but, you know, like I feel like the schism is not really set up yet. 
Um, but I guess he really thinks he needs it in the grind. Um, so I don't know if that was the best play by him. He goes a pointer, and he looks on my hand of double landing storm, so he realizes I need he needs to hit the fractal actually here. And so he does hit the fractal. And so I think for to myself here for a second, should I should I banish the um should I activate my lightning storm? Because the traps are not really pressing to me right now. Like there's no there's no immediate danger to the traps. Um, but I'm not sure again. I also know that he has Droll in his hand, and so now I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I know that Droll is not the end of the world for me as well. I just, you know, the fractal is fine; it's good enough against Droll. But I eventually decide to just Lightning Storm, just in case he top decks a bunch of Shadol like dumpers next turn. I don't want to be in trouble here, and so I decide to Lightning Storm because I have two. So I'm like, I might as well just Lightning Storm now. If he draws more traps, I'll just Lightning Storm again. So my fractal comes back; it's his turn. He uh, flips his Wendy, which you should just Ash. Uh, I think it's just good good practice to just Ash. Um, and he actually has a Duality, which you can activate now with the new rules. Uh, I looked that up after. And so he grabs a Hedgehog. He can't really grab a back row because it's just going to get Lightning Storm. So I understand why he didn't grab Dynamiscus there because he knows I have two Lightning Storms. So that's the Hedgehog and hopes for the best, but it's not going to work. I know he has Droll, so I just go Fractal first. Fractal Kit Nerval. Grab another Fractal, and he's going to have to drill me here, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to go into the Simwork link, and, you know, that's basically going to wrap up this game. And so, uh, yeah, that's GG. Um, those are my matches, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this dual uh, commentary. I know a lot of you guys have been wondering you know, how, how do real matches look like, how, you know, not just combos and stuff. And, you know, I didn't do any, like, super combos this game, but I definitely played through interaction. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, if you enjoy my content, do please consider subscribing. And I hope I will see you guys in my next video.